So let's apply our understanding of centripetal acceleration, of circular motion. This car is going east at a speed of 87 kilometers per hour with the cruise control on. It doesn't change speed, it turns 90 degrees so that it's heading south at the same speed, still 87 kilometers per hour. What is the car's acceleration? It didn't change speed, it wasn't speeding up or slowing down, but it was accelerating because its velocity changed from east to south. You can see also that it's not going in a complete circle, but it's going in a curve, which is part of a circle. So we can still use the AC formula. You can think of this, it's called centripetal acceleration, but you can think of it as circular acceleration or acceleration in a curve. So I need to know the radius of curvature of the curve. Let's say it's 30 meters. So how much is this car accelerating? You can understand, I hope, that it is accelerating, but it's also kind of weird that we can calculate the number. So what is the acceleration? 87 kilometers per hour, of course, we've got to change that into meters per second, which is about 24.2 meters per second. But leave it in your calculator, and then we'll dump it into the formula. AC equals V squared over R, that's 24.2 meters per second, all squared, divided by 30 meters. Check out my units. One meter will cancel, I'll end up with meters per second squared, which is really good because it's an acceleration. What do I end up with there? 19.5 meters per second squared, which is a lot. It's almost two Gs. This is a tight curve. If you're going almost 90 kilometers an hour, it's gonna feel like you're pressed against the outer door of the car. Um, what am I missing here? All I've calculated is the acceleration. But what about the direction of the acceleration? Which way is it? If I asked you on average what its acceleration would be from here to here, you would say towards the center. You would say that way. On average, the acceleration would be equal to 19.5 west 45 south. That would be the average acceleration. But do you understand that the acceleration is constantly changing? At the very beginning of the curve, he's accelerating towards the center, which is south. As he turns, his acceleration changes. At this exact spot, his velocity would be southeast and his acceleration would be southwest. If he keeps turning, at this point, his velocity is south, his acceleration would be west. But then he'll stop turning and go straight. And Newton's first law takes over again. One more thing we can do, if we can untangle ourselves from our microphone, one more thing we can do is calculate the size of the force required to turn the car because the car has a mass of 2,000 kilometers and you know the acceleration. So we know that the net force must be equal to ma. We'll talk later about what's providing that force, but what's 2,000 times 19.5? I don't know, Mr. Caruana. What is 2,000 times 19.5? 2,000 times 9.5, nope, 19.5, gives us 39,000 newtons. So it would require an unbalanced force of 39,000 newtons towards the center of the circle to force this car to make the turn. If friction's not up for it, the car will skid. Perfect. That was a cameo. The great man can't lift his arm over his shoulder anymore.